Somewhere beyond the grave There is a land Where Jesus went to prepare By his own hand And for the saved by grace, there is a resting place. And in a few more days, it will be mine. Some call it heaven. I call it home, some call it dreaming, well let me dream on, some call it paradise, somewhere beyond the sky. Someone said you can't go back home again For things will not ever be as good as they've been But I've got good news for you. When heaven comes into view, one glimpse and you'll know the best is yet to come. Some call it heaven. things a little different tonight. We had, a, of course, we have our own school here, for those that may not know, and we try to not just teach the one, two, threes, A, B, C, science, algebra, those kinds of things. We do all that. But we try to teach the individual what God expects out of their life and why. Sometimes they need to think for themselves, and I don't mean like the world or uh, schools of lower learning try to teach you to be critical and go against the norm. Not that kind of teaching. One of our teachers, Mrs. Uh, Munson. Yeah, I know. Jessica. 
she challenged uh, for penmanship. Now, I'm not going to necessarily show you that. <laughs> but in the penmanship class, they, she said, here's what I'd like you to write about. I want you to write a letter to God. And so they did. I'd like to read some of these to you about what some of you, your parents are in here tonight. I want you to hear what they had to say. This first one, I'll tell you who it is after I read the letter. The letter goes like this. Letter to God. Dear God, can you help me pay attention in class, please? Let Kyman, Grandpa, get saved, please. Thank you for my life. Thank you for my family. I'm having a great time. I love you. I'm happy. And I, I can't wait till you come back. I will love my mansion, and I love your creation. This is Rai Rai Celia. We're going to clap. Ready for this one? Thank you for dying on the cross. You are the best guy ever. Please tell my pawpaw I'm doing amazing in sports. Thank you for letting us get home from Alabama. When we went to Alabama, we had car trouble. I'm trying to read the writing here. It was really scary. May I please have boxing gloves? How's Paul Paul doing? May I please have a bigger trampoline? Please help me to be good. This would be Noah. Next one. Please get my grandpa saved before he dies. Please help with the church finances. Now you're talking about a seven, eight-year-old kid. I am happy we saw the eclipse. I love praying to you. I love reading my Bible. I'm happy I have friends. I'm happy that you took care of me. I'm happy I'm saved. Thank you for watching me. I say, Thank you for watching me in heaven. Thank you for making me. This is Kaiman Mao. This will be the last one that I have, but I want to read this to you. I'll tell you who wrote this after I'm done. Thank you, God, for my family and for my lovely, beautiful, and nice teachers. I, I don't teach her. <laughs> Thank you for my school and for coming down from heaven to save us. May you tell my grandpa and grandma that we really miss them, please. May you heal my mom, please. Heal my family, please, from the cold. I think that's what it says. After the eclipse, all the animals were making a lot of noise. My mom told me that after, the, after you, Lord, do something, all the animals praise you. I think that's a whole lot better than a scientific answer. We just got a new swing, and my dad is going to put it together tomorrow. We just got a new huge rug. Now, they're talking to God. They're writing to You understand this? You're an amazing Lord. This is Sophia. Monsigno. These are a lot of the kids that we have here, or some of the kids that we have here. And I wanted you to hear that. Sometimes they do things that you, you just, you don't get it. You don't, you don't see it. They don't say anything to you. And uh, so these are some of the things that your children do in our school and that our teachers uh, invite them and challenge them to be a part of, to get them to thinking about God. So she didn't tell them what to say, as you can tell. I don't think Miss Jess is going to say, ask for boxing gloves. <laughs> but this is the, these kinds of things are what's on children's heart. The part that amazed me was some of the things that they thought about. Children think a lot about people they love that are in heaven. 
probably a whole lot more than we do at times. And so I wanted you to hear that. I want tonight to, we have a roaming microphone that's going to come around and give some testimonies tonight. Now, here's what's been going on. I want, I want to just, now I'm going to miss somebody, so please forgive me ahead of time. I'm going to read a list of people that do things around here. It's an amazing thing. In the past, uh, we'll call it 10 years, all of the things our church had to go through and faced, and all of those that decide they need to go somewhere else for whatever reasons, not the point. And yet what God is doing in return to rebuild and prepare us as we go forward. Most of the people in this room, really, seriously, the majority of them are probably 40 and down. With all these little kids and many, many more, I, our school is going to be elementary heavy. The majority of our kids this year is going to be K-4 through 6th grade. I mean, a bunch of them coming in if parents are able to do this and you need to pray about this. Let me, let me just tell you about some of our young adults. Could I do that? Now, if I miss you, please forgive me because forgiving is what God tells us to do. I think of Lanice, and she doesn't get a lot of praise, single mom, and uh, children's choir, helps in all kinds of children's activities, actually becomes a mom to some of the girls that don't know where else to go, and she just takes them in, gives them rides. She even helps other kids that don't go to our school, go, go to our church, gives them a ride, watches over in the morning, brings them here. She does things all the time, helps with laundry sometimes, and one of the nicest people you'll ever want to meet. And I was amazed when she first came here, her daughter was just a little thing. Now she's like six, five or something, whatever, and uh, had some pretty rough times getting started. But she stayed single mom and does all this, and now one of the nicest people in our church you'll ever want to meet or become a friend to you. She's just that kind of a person. I was thinking of Jordan and Felicia. Uh, Jordan leads our music here. His wife plays piano for us. It's a pretty amazing thing. By the way, her, her daddy and her brother are here, and uh, we're glad that they are here. Up from Houston, Austin, Austin, Texas, and uh, up here visiting with him for about a week. And uh, when they first came here, there's a lot of things that's different. I mean, you're going from Texas to Ohio. That's quite a change. And then she married Jordan. That's really a change. And uh, Jordan grew up here. Jordan got, now, let me help you understand. Just because you grow up in this environment doesn't mean everything's going to go right for you. And they had to face some things, and they have. And uh, they stayed together, and they watched over each other. And now they've got all these little ones coming up that uh, she decided to have two at a time or something like that. And uh, things were tough. Her health's not all that it should be. And she just keeps going on all the time. And what, what would we do had she not been here? Uh, really, I mean, look at, look at the piano playing and the music she's added to our church. And we're very, very thankful for that. Just some of our young people. Jorge Monsignor, if he's not busy enough, the guy was working two jobs. He's got a family of five. That's just the kids. He was working at, uh, I believe, the trucking company and uh, at overnight. I think it was overnight. Huh? Oh, uh, FedEx, and doing all that. And he'd come in late sometimes on a Sunday morning. I looked and I said, look, you can't do this. He said, preach, I'm sorry. I just got off work. And I thought, oh, okay, I'll stab me. And I thought, he never said a word. He never said a word, just said, I, I'll, I'll do better. And it goes on, and all of his kids, I mean, you ought to see just as patient as he can be. He helps in our Spanish church, and his wife, what a tremendous lady that she is. He's teaching English. He came to me today, and he said, Preacher, I'd like to start teaching the Spanish people English. Could I do that? I said, you know, I think that is a great idea. And we talked about it a little bit. I said, so when do you want to get started? He said, I'm going to go and get some now. So he had him over there this afternoon teaching English to some of our Spanish-speaking people. And the guy just goes on and on and on, always thinking of other people. These are the folks that go to church here. I was thinking about Jakai. Now, he's not an older guy around here. But Jakai, I don't know if you know this or not, was preaching this morning. Right? Somebody sent me a, a, um, a video of that. He did good. He did real good. Very proud of you. Now, he came here. And how old were you when you came here? Ten years old. Now he's twelve. And, uh, what a great young man this is. Mommy, you did a great job. 
He really did. You and God make pretty good combination, you know. She's a single mom too, by the way, and uh, glad that you're here. He's a bus captain, whether in title or not. He's a bus captain. Uh, he works in our sound room up there. He helps with the teenagers, helps on the property, and on and on and on. Just talking about another one of our young people here that help out so much. Matthias, where's he at? He's upstairs. There he is. That's where we like to keep him, in the corner. <laughs> Matthias came here. What a story. Uh, where's mommy? There. How old was he when he came here? 16? Yeah, we got him a little late. The world was trying to make a sissy out of him. And uh, had long hair. I think you even had earrings, didn't you? You were the cutest little thing. And uh, he came here. Nobody got on his case. Nobody said anything. And one day he just said, I think I need to get my hair cut. And he took out the earrings. And what a great young man he has turned out to be. He didn't get rid of it and put them in his pocket. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. kidding. And so... Uh, he, by the way, both of these young men are getting ready to graduate from our school this year, and we're very, very pleased to have him here. He works on buses, sound room, property, helps people all the time. He wants to be a mechanic and help people and learn that trade. I think that's a great thing to do. I was thinking of Brother David Ward. Not much, but I was thinking of him. Brother, D- Brother Dave had came to us, and it's a long story. He came here when he was a little kid. I don't know if you know this or not. He rode one of our buses in here, and I got his parents to come. And, and like a lot of things, things start off okay, and then all the wheels come off. And normally, in, for the kids, they can't do a thing about it. They just have to go, and, and that's what he did. And he left here and uh, just out doing things. And I guess he decided to join the military. So he just finished up last month, uh, 20 years, and uh, so we're glad to have him here with us. And just just an honest person. And I was going to tell you, part of what I was going to preach on tonight, I had two different people here. I think I told you this story, and one person said, I didn't know if I'd be welcome if I came back. David Ward walks in and said, I knew I would. I said, how would you know that? He said, preacher, when I was little, you always had time for me. You'd always stop and talk to me. And he said, I still remember that to this day. And that's why the friendliness of this church means a lot. It means a lot. The majority of people attend the church because of friends. Did you know that? It hurt my feelings that it wasn't because of the preacher. But that's what they say. So we're glad to have Brother Warwick. He's becoming quite a leader in the bus area. Got a great sense of humor. Uh, tries to help everywhere he can and uh, is a good giver, and you need to pray for him. He's facing some things that I think he's going to be okay in, but you need to pray about that. I'm thinking about Soren and and Socks sitting down here, and uh, Soren, though he's Cambodian, I like him. When they came here, I mean, you look back on the pictures, and you're going, that's not the same people. Yeah, same people. And uh, what a privilege it is to have them in our church. And we look at their children, and I think most of this because of mom. You know, tie's got to be perfect, hair's got to be perfect, clothes got to be perfect, everybody's got to be perfect, and I'm all for that. I, th- I think that's the right thing to do. But he's really coming on strong and learning so many things. He helps in the sound room and ushering. He helps on the bus route. And did they just make you a captain? <laughs> Pressure's on now, though, isn't it? And... Uh, by the way, I've, a, I've asked him to be a deacon. He's turned me down twice. And so, uh, but uh, now they're both 30. Right, Sock? Okay. On the low side of 30. Right, Sock? Okay, got it. And uh, why, they're just tremendous people. Tremendous. They're part of your family here. I was thinking of Ben Croker. Ben helps uh, prepare buses. I don't know if you know this morning. He comes now in the morning and gets the buses warmed up and gets them pulled over here. Most of the time. Most of the time. And uh, to help him out. And uh, also, uh, he is our Sunday school teacher, a deacon, an usher, and uh, one of my very, very best friends because he married Miriam. <laughs> so as long as he treats Miriam, he can stay. And so uh, he's a part of this also. Of course, Miriam, just a lovely lady. You'll never meet a nicer lady than her. I was thinking of Sharon Pledger. Sharon came here from down in Texas also. We're pulling him away from Texas fast we can, folks. And uh, you guys need to write that down in your notes. Okay. Sharon, uh, my wife, slowly turned over the ladies' meetings to her. 
and here's this young lady right out of college come up here and saw potential. And uh, we thought, you know something, we need to invest in this young lady and her husband. And we did. Of course, this is her husband sitting up here. And uh, Sharon does the ladies' meetings, watches over the nurseries. It's funny, when I first asked her that, she said, I don't think so. And I thought, okay, this is, something bad's happened here. Well, it's the, it was what was expected out of her where she used to go to uh, church. And I said, tell you what I'll do. You make up the order and make sure the ladies in place. I'll handle all the problems. I don't handle any of the problems anymore. Uh, and she does this for me, never says a word. She's taken over the late Mrs. Bell, turned that over to her. She's a Sunday school teacher and just giving her, so how old's your wife? I should ask her, where's she at? Is she in here? I figure she's in the nursery. And so anyway, like that. You know, I was thinking also of Jordan Morell. Jordan, where's Abigail? Abigail, Jordan doesn't really sleep, does he? He tries. Okay. <laughs> Jordan is, uh, in what he does as a job, would finish most people all by itself. He is actually, I guess, uh, J.P. Morgan Chase, like a large, a lot of companies, have um, um, vice presidents, lots of them, in different places. So he worked for J.P. Morgan Chase, and he never says anything. All the things he's able to do, he never hardly says anything. He's just there to do it. And I think of him sometimes, and I often ask him, I said, do you ever sleep? So when he's done here, all the thing he has to do around here, he has, he has a Sunday school teacher. He's a bus captain. He helps with our website. He's a deacon. He works in the sound room, which is where he's at right now. He's a bus captain, on and on and on. He helps so many people. He'll pick people up and drop them off. He has two boys and a wife from Mexico. <laughs> We're very proud of Abigail. Abigail kind of grew up here since she was a teenager, and Jordan came here. Best thing ever happened to him. Best thing ever happened to us was them coming here. Jordan, how old are you? And Abigail's like 19 or something. You really? Abigail, 32 years old. Okay. I was thinking of uh, also moving on about Justin Miller. Justin Miller helps in junior church. You never get to see him on Sunday morning. I think he's sleeping in. But I think he's downstairs helping with all the kids down there. One of the larger guys in our church helping with kids. Go figure. And so he's down there doing that. He helps other people. One day I, I had this car and I pulled out the oil stick. And for the life of me, I couldn't find the hole. Put it back in there. You think that's funny. I mean, by the time I was done, my hands were all blue, blue and bloody and dripping. And, and I'm thinking, I was so frustrated. Guess who I called? I called Brother Miller. First thing he says, is it a Jeep? I said, no, he's, I'm not working on Jeeps. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Jordan, there you go. So that's about for you guys. So I said, no, it's not. He said, I'll, watch this. He's working on a car at his house, and he said, as soon as I get done, I'll be right over. Well, we went down to Honduras. They were having trouble with one of their vans. They had all kinds of guys working on it, and they kept saying, it's not running right. It's not running right. They told him what he did. First thing he said was, that can't be the problem. He looked at it, got those big arms and hands of his down inside there, fixed the problem. And even the following year when Brother Nelms was here, he said, it's still running great. He's always willing to help other people do these kinds of things all the time. And so he helps in junior church. He helps other people. He's usher. He helps on the bus routes. He does everything and anything that if he's got the time, he will try his very best to help other people. Those kind of people here that we have. I was thinking of Mike and Jessica back there. Mike is secretary. Now, that sounds effeminate, but he is the secretary uh, because our secretary moved out to California. They'll pay for that someday. <laughs> he heads up our financial department. He redesigned our website here just recently. He assists in, in a Sunday school classroom over here. Jessica helps with the... Oh, with many, with is a helper to a lot of different areas around here. She goes and picks people up, brings them to church. She's our head of the custodial duties around here. She teaches other people how to help do things like that. She teaches in our school also, and uh, we're very, very proud of them. These are the people that you have in your church. Now, I said, if I miss somebody, don't take it to heart. I was thinking of Peter and Melissa, two very, very young people came to our church, both of them just submissive helpers. See, you don't get notice from God and God's people by demanding notice. It just doesn't work that way. 
He's the principal of our school. He's the principal of our institute. He teaches there. She teaches there. She's a teacher. She's the secretary out there. They do organizational things around here. You wouldn't believe does research and proofreading for, for a lot of the stuff that goes on around here. He does design work. He works on property. And you wouldn't think somebody with all those qualities. And by the way, most of these people are college graduates. Most of them are. Most of them hope they are. But it didn't. And so what happens is you have the, I brought that up for a reason. When you stop and consider everything that's happened in the past 10 years, if you know anything about that or don't, it's beside the point. Brother Daryl Cox told me one time, I told him, I said, uh, Brother Cox, we don't have everything we're supposed to have. We just recently had a split. Now, that was back when, okay, before phone cells went off in the, in the church. Uh, hopefully that's not your brother. But listen to me. There are people all around you like this, all around you in this church. And with everything that went on, here's the way I look at this. First of all, I don't feel bad that I'm one of probably six old people around here. I don't feel bad about that at all. I feel very privileged that I have a young group of people coming up with children coming up behind them that love this place, love the Lord, want to do us right, and trying to figure out what to do as they go forward. I'm all for that. I really am. And I want you to know some of these people here. And this is not all. Other people here, too. Brother Gio and his family, huge help since they come here. As soon as I got him straightened out, huge help. And uh, so glad to have all of you here. And I could mention so many more people here. We have ladies here, single moms, that are a huge testimony for the Lord. Just a huge testimony of dependence upon the Lord, showing other people this can be done. You're going to have to walk a long time sometimes by yourself. And sometimes people may not understand, but they're here. What a testimony they have. Young, young women, young women. And uh, so pleased with all of them. But I think of so many of you in here. I really do. By the way, I didn't mention you, did I? David Chris helps. What a helper he's turned out to be. There was a time I was about ready to shoot him. Oh, that's nothing. I think his mom and dad both were going to shoot him there for a moment. And I mean, just rebellious. I'd go by and, and I'd say things like, how you doing? I mean, like that. He'd make it known. I won't talk to you. And uh, now he hugs me. He hu- not like that. Not that, yeah, not that kind of hugging. And uh, he works on property. Helps out. Every- By the way, I, I'm not sure what I would do had he not been here to help work on our property. And uh, valuable on the buses. Him and, and, him and all the sisters. All the sisters work on buses. And they're getting ready to go off to college. All the brother Chris's and Miss Chris's daughters are going, and now it's just going to be the man in the house. And uh, so that means you're going to have to do dishes and laundry, and you're going to have to do it all. When, when the girls go away, you're stuck, buddy. And so we have more and more teenagers coming up. Elementary school is heavy with little kids just starting K-4, first grade through sixth grade. There's a real future here. And in my opinion, my opinion, for what it's worth, Everything that is trying to pull down, destroy, stop, whatever. Label it how you want to. Brother Cox said, Brother Bell, you recover from splits faster than anybody that I know of. I don't know if I want to be known for that. <laughs> but he said, had you not told me that a lot of people just, and this was years back, he said, I wouldn't even known it. God, I don't know why. and I, God has no spoiled children. But I've often wondered why God takes care of this place the way he does. We all sin. We all fumble the ball. We all want to quit at times. We all face things we don't like. But something about it, young adults and their children just keep coming this way. We have another lady right here. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy at all. Nobody said it was supposed to be easy. It's just right. Right's not always easy. It's just right. And so we have to do that. I wanted. I was saying all this and preface all this for some testimonies I want you to have. Now, we have, uh, where's my microphone at? Are you the one doing that? Okay, when I point out somebody, you move. Okay, there we go. Uh, I don't even see him in here. Which word, Mullins? Oh. He just, he blended in with all the white folks. I didn't know where he was. <laughs> Jordan was born here. His mommy's back there. His mommy's been here 34 years. 
And uh, can you imagine putting up with me for 30-some years? Yeah, that's enough. And so um, he was born here, grew up here. His whole family used to come here. His daddy's in heaven now. And um, I'm glad that he is there. Rather, he were here, just like Miss Vicky's husband. So many of you have a, a mom or a dad in heaven. The Millers do also. Uh, your daddy's in heaven. Her husband's in heaven. Many of you have it. By the way, pray for Mrs. Weaver. Her brother's not doing well and uh, in Indiana, and you need to pray for him. Brother Warren Storm is not doing well. Brother Vaprazan's not doing well. These are all the people that I used to go to church and go places and visit their church. Now they're old people. They're old people. They're getting old, uh, just like your preacher is. And so you have to understand, thank God that people are coming up behind us. Amen. You go to some churches, just a bunch of Q-tips sitting around trying to learn how to breathe. It's the truth. Q-tips. Get it? White hair? Okay, you'll get it. <laughs> so I feel very refreshed in that young people and their children. Why? I, honestly, I do not know, and I'm not trying to be humble about that. I do not know why young adults and their children keep coming this way. The only explanation I have is, it's what God wants right now. So they keep coming here. And I want you to understand, uh, Jordan, yeah, he is here. It's Jordan Mullins. I was there the night he was born. Actually, they didn't think he was going to make it, right, Mom? They said her high blood pressure and stuff and uh, things that go wrong, believe it or not, with black people during tub, tr- right? During tub life. They said, this is normally what happens. That's normal. Quit being so touchy. Get over yourself. And she's black and so is he. And I'm a white, white guy, okay? All right? Not my fault. My mom and dad had me. So he was there, and they really thought he was either going to be, his brain would be on the outside of his skull or his backbone on the outside of his skin, or he'll be, at, at the very least, mildly retarded. One out of three. <laughs> it, am I right? Oh, you weren't there. Right, Mom? They said that? Right. So I don't make his stuff up. This is true. So I've watched him over the years. He's a good businessman now, lovely wife, good kids. So proud of them. I'd like you to give a testimony about either somebody that you recently won to Christ or something. Now, don't take me back to first grade and start all over. Just something that you're thankful that God has done for you. Go ahead. Um, Close to the microphone. Weren't those kids' letters amazing? After, I can't believe I'm getting a testimony after this. Um, but uh, yesterday, uh, me and Brother Jakai went out soul winning, and uh, a soul winning partner, and I have to be honest with the story because it's right here, and I'll make it up. Um, <laughs> lightning came down on us, and no, I'm just kidding. But um, <laughs> it was our last house we went to, and um, it was two girls that usually come. They've been coming for about a month or two, and uh, just faithful girls. They come on bus one, they come on our bus two. Uh, but I never met the mom. I never talked to her. And uh, we, she was outside. The girls were outside playing soccer. And uh, just like I do, I knew Brother Jakai do, just, hey, the girls come to church tomorrow? Yeah, they'll be there. Okay, great. And just something inside of me just told me, not inside of me, just something said, you know, it's okay. Don't talk to her about salvation. You know, she used to go to church. And uh, I know the Holy Spirit was talking to me. And he said, just ask her. And I asked her about salvation, and I said, hey, let me ask you a question. Are you 100% sure you're going to go to heaven like we all do? And, uh, and then she said, you know what? I, uh, I, I, I try to do good. You know, I try to do what's right. And when they, when, as soon as they say, I try to, preacher, it's just like, okay, that's not how you go to heaven. Uh, let me tell you. So I just asked her a question. Okay, well, I'm glad you're you know, doing good and everything. And I said, why did Jesus die on the cross for us? And then she just looked at me and said, well, she knew him for our sins. She knew that. And I said, okay, well, you're working your way to heaven, aren't you? She was like, yeah, but he did die for us, didn't he? And I was like, yes, he did. I was like, let me tell you a little bit about it. And then I went to the Romans roadmap, and she got saved. Praise the Lord. And, uh, and it's funny, too. I didn't, tell, I didn't say this. Sorry, I took a little longer. Uh, but I, uh, afterward, when she told me that she tries to do this right, she went to the story about her Latino family. And uh, about having a big family, Latinos have a big family. And I said, well, that's racist, ma'am. Uh, and, uh, but I know you'll be welcome in our church. Uh, <laughs> but but is it, and, she, and, and I didn't say that. I did not say that at all. Uh, 
I just made that up. But I'm telling you what, the most important thing that I saw after she got saved is she started bawling. And she started crying. And, uh, I mean, I held my emotions back. And I was like, okay, do not cry. Because typically when women cry, I cry. They, 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 they want to hug. I'm not hugging her. Uh, but I'm telling you what, you can tell when someone gets saved. And she, she was saved yesterday. And, and she was born because her daughter's dad passed away uh, four years ago. And it was her birth, his birthday the day before. And she just told me, she was like, man, I, it's just been so hard. It's been tough. I, all my emotions just let out. And just something now is just peaceful. And I was like, well, that's the Holy Spirit inside of you now. And that's Jesus saving you. So what, what, a, what a tremendous, just anybody who gets saved, you just praise the Lord for it. Anyone at all. So thank you, preacher. Now, we're going to ask some others, but you can't preach. Okay? I'd like to ask Brother Soren. Brother Soren is really coming on here lately. Um, I think he's starting to reach that maturing level to where the boy in him is starting to subside and the man of him is really beginning to come out. And he's taking on responsibility. I remember my mom telling me all the time, I came back from Vietnam and I said, well, Mom, I guess I'm all grown up now. You remember what my mom said? Being grown up has nothing to do with age or size. It has to do with handling responsibility. My mom wasn't even saved and knew that. So I think verbally she kind of slapped me. I didn't catch on right away, but later on it made sense to me. And this is what's happened to this young man when he came here. Pray for his family. A lot of his brothers mixed up in Asian gangs and, and wish they were here. His sister, I've met them all. It could be very, very, very nice young people uh, serving the Lord. And they envy him. They don't understand him, but they envy him. And what a great young man. Give us a testimony of either somebody who won to the Lord or what God's doing in your life. Real quick. Okay. I'll take you back to the Nam. That's going to be Nam. No, okay. Um, so we, we went soul winning yesterday, uh, Saturday. And uh, we know about Wedgwood. Wedgwood is... You know, pretty wild. Um, I'm going to take you back. Uh, yeah. So, recently, I'm going to take you back a bit. I'm not preaching. But, um, so, a guy, like, when we would go out in the morning going uh, pick up kids for church, and we had a, a guy pull a, a scissor on me. And it was, it was pretty crazy. And I was like. Scissors? Scissors. And he was like, if you ever come back here, I'm going to stab you. I was like, okay, stab me. I'll put you down right now. And he was like, okay. He was like, okay. <laughs> But sir, that, that was serious the case. He, you know, That's what that. we teach. Yeah. Yeah, uh, okay, but back to testimony. Okay, um, back, back to Vietnam. Uh, Go ahead. So we went out to uh, Wedgwood. I went to one of the apartment complex. Um, went to the bottom floor of Wedgwood, and I was able to witness to um, a woman named uh, Kamaya. And you know, she was really receptive to you know, the gospel and what I was trying to tell her about you know, Jesus Christ. And uh, you know, she was really receptive in, in her heart, and she got saved. And you know, I'm glad that she did because later on her boyfriend came and, you know, tattoos everywhere. And after that, she just got really quiet. So I'm just glad that she was able to get saved before yeah. the time when he came. You know, that was trying to stop it beforehand. And another one, um, I went up to the third floor and I was able to talk to a lady named uh, Lakeisha. And, you know, I was talking to her and I noticed that she had a Bible open. And, you know, the, the Bible was highlighted and everything. I was like, okay. And I asked her about the Bible. I was like, uh, and, you know, if, if you were to die right now, would you go to heaven? And she was like, I don't know. I, you know, I'm going to, I have to do good. I was like, oh, <laughs> okay. Then, you know, the Bible was out of the question. And I was able to witness to her. She was like, oh, so that makes sense. You know, I was explaining about the, the gospel and about Jesus Christ that, you know, it doesn't really matter what you read. You, you won't understand the Bible until you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. And I was able to witness her that she was, she was able to understand what I was talking about, and she got saved then. Good. And those were the two salvation I had yesterday. So. Good for you. Thank you very much. Ben, step on in here, would you please? Ben came here. How long have you been here now? Um, that long. It's about that long. I don't know. Years? Does anybody know? Where's Miriam? Nursery. Uh, I figured it's okay. Uh, ben, how did you get here? I drove. 
Uh, so this, this whole okay. church full of comedians. <laughs> Uh, and okay. the, the short story of that one was... Um, oh, no, don't preach. Give no, us no, a no. testimony okay. or somebody you want to Lord. Okay, so uh, yesterday, uh, Dave and I were out soul winning. Who? Okay. Dave, this David. Okay. This David. All right. Yeah, that David. Uh, and uh, we're also in Wedgwood, and we get to a couple houses, and it's the normal, hi, would you like to know? Okay, fine. Hey, would you? No. Okay, fine. And we get to one, and now I have to preface this. I am one of the few people that is over 40 here. So anybody that's 20 and under, you all look like teenagers to me. And I have to pr- say that because knock on this door and someone answers the door and I'm like, are your parents here? <laughs> <laughs> Turns out she, she was the parent, fortunately. He's like, well, great. Let me give you a track from our church. So we start talking and, and it's, it was the, the thing that struck me the most was it was the, it was the situation that Brother Pletcher was talking about in bus meeting is that, you know, it's always the person that you don't think that's going to listen yeah. that actually listens. So this is someone I'm like, okay, fine. I'm expecting it to just shut the doors. I'm like, hey, you want to know how to get heaven? Yes. Okay, let's open up the track and go through it together. And it, it was great because uh, there were so many distractions going on. Uh, apparently, neighbors had <laughs> moving in next to them, um, and they were just packing in furniture, coming up and down. Um, kid was just running all over the place. Uh, like they do, and she was able just to, like, put the kids off to the side and just constantly just, it, it was really bad. It was like a dog. She, this little girl had, like, stuffed toys, so she'd bring it over. The mom would throw it, and the kid would go play fetch and bring it back. Uh, but the whole time, she's actually listening. We're engaging through it, um, and, and it was just something where she knew of church. She knew of God, but that was it. Yeah. And so it's just easy. It, it, it just go step by step yeah. by step. Um, and at the end of it, she said, yes, I'll, and it's one of the things that Brother Pledger said, too, is when you uh, were doing the soul winning teachings, says, you know, try to get them to, to not make it a choice, but to a trusting. So, again, it was something that he had taught me before. It's like, ask him, are you willing to trust Jesus now? And sure enough, she said, yes. And so we prayed right there and got That's saved. That's great. Good for you. Wonderful. I was talking a little earlier about this young lady, and uh, she just happens to be married to, but if I don't hold that against her. She's a great girl. And so, Miss Sharon, would you stay and give us a testimony or somebody you just witnessed to recently and how that went? Would you do that, please? I don't have any volume, fellas. Okay, so, <laughs> um, so uh, the Lord's been working on my heart a lot, the past, especially this past year, about being a personal witness, not just being going out when I'm supposed to, but being a soul winner, not just something I do. So we've been going out on, uh, on Saturdays, visiting my Sunday school girls, and me and the boys were out yesterday, and I've been praying for the Lord to put me in the right place that he needs me, um, and not just talk to just random people, but talk to the people that he needs me. So we're um, visiting Sunday school girls, and I'm trying to give tracks to the people that I see, um, but there was never really like an opening. They are just, you know, kind of take it and keep on walking. Um, so we were driving, and there is a lady sitting on her... Um, like porch. So I pull over to the side and it's like this alley. So I kind of pull in and I'm blocking the alley and I'm like, surely no one's going to come. It'll be fine. Tell the boys to stay in. I get out and talk to her, Aisha. And um, she was really sweet. She said, you know, I've been to church before. I've gone to my grandparents' church, but I don't really, you know, she's like, I don't really go like I'm supposed to. Um, So I asked her if she was saved. She said, yes, she was. But when I asked her, you know, well, how do you know that? What are you trusting in? Um, She kind of, well, you know, I'm you know, I try to do good and I pray and you started listing all the things. So I, you know, tell her about Ephesians, you know, two, eight, nine. And then I was like, can I show you the verses here and kind of, you know, show you what the Bible says. And of course, right at that moment, that's when another car comes in and is trying to go down the alley and they were not very happy that I was blocking the way. So, um, I was like, give me one minute. So I pull around, I tell the boys, I'm like, I'm blocking everything. <laughs> and I'm like, boys, come here you know, threatening them, don't move. And so I sit there and she was very kind. You know, she was actually reading the track when I got back and I was able to talk to her, you know, go through the whole thing. And um, at the end, I, you know, asked her, would you like to trust Christ? And she said yes. So she prayed and she got saved. Are you, are you starting to get the picture? What a local church is all about is just not a bunch of nice people getting together, trying not to do what the world does makes us better. That's not necessarily true. 
God saved us and left us here to do what these folks are doing here. Yeah. He said, I can't come out on Saturday. There's no Saturday soul winning in the right. Bible. Right. Witnessing to lost people is what we're supposed to do everywhere we go. And so I want to go this next time. Brother Celia, can you come down here, please? Come on down here. I'll run things. Come on down. Hurry up. Get out. I'm just checking to see if everything's on. Now, Brother Celia came here, Melissa, how long ago? Well, actually, Melissa is the one that got him coming. This. I'm sorry, Michelle. Sorry. Sorry. Getting all these ladies mixed up anymore. Where's Mrs. Bell? She's sitting over here somewhere. Um, I'm kidding. No, she, there's a Mrs. Bell there, and there's Mrs. Bell there. Um, you came here first, and uh, family was running in, from what I understand, a few problems. She said, isn't it amazing? There's something that seems to be innate in us that God kind of put in us. When things are going wrong, here's what we say, eh, maybe I ought to go to church. Yeah. Isn't that something the way people do that? Wow. Maybe I ought to read my Bible. And the Bible said, God lighteth every man that cometh in the world. Yes. We are taught to unbelief yes. because every child comes in with a sense to want to believe. And so when things go wrong, it's just what we do. Maybe I ought to go to church. That's what she did, right? Well, when she was little, I didn't know this. She was a bus kid to this church. And so what? You, this is the importance of bringing people to church. I don't need that. I don't, okay, one day you will. One day you will. And most of us go, what if that church? Somebody uh, called the other day. And uh, no, who's I talking to? Uh, uh, Jessica's not in here, is she? She, uh, she said, Preacher, I was out soul winning the other day, and I ran this person and said, Anchor Baptist Church, I used to go there when I was a kid. And now uh, she's telling me this story, and I'll probably get it all mixed up, but I like the way I tell stories. <laughs> and she said, uh, this woman she's talking to said, Is Pastor Bell still there? She either said, He's, he's real funny, or, do you remember what she said? Okay. And then she said, He's cute. Oh, that's Mike. And then uh, I said, so did you tell her, you ought to come and see him now? And she goes, no, I didn't hear that part. So what happened was she was supposed to be here today, right, Mike? I believe so. And she didn't show up. But listen to me carefully. There are people out there that somewhere God at times has to break them down for they see their need of him. As long as we have everything going away, for the most part, or it looks like we still have more hope of going in the direction we want to go, we'll never turn to Christ. Right. Why? I don't have a need. So what the Lord does in his loving for us, he takes things from us right. till we finally say, God, what's going on? I need yeah. you. And God said, it's all I wanted. It's all I wanted. So you'll find out when time of death is a great time to witness to people about yeah. Jesus. Accidents of some kind or another, great time. Hospital stays, great. Why? Because now people are probably serious. The closer to death a person gets, if they're ever going to get serious, it'll be during that time. They can deny the Lord all they want to, but when it comes close to that, when they have a brush with death, something very, very serious that they can't control, they'll call out to the Lord. And that's why you need to be there. We're not in this world just to make money and go ahead and do what we want to do, and hopefully nobody will bother us. That is not Christianity at all. So we need to do what these people are doing here. But see, give us your testimony, would you please? Or somebody you won to the Lord? Um, actually, the person I won to the Lord is actually here tonight. Um, oh, but, that's right. Uh, yeah. Co-worker. Serena, yeah, yeah. co-worker. Um, one of my goals um, when, you know, we had to go out to work, as, you know, most of you guys know, we had to go out and get jobs. Um, and one of my main goals for that was to um, be an influence um, out in the world, and especially in my work. Um, and that's one thing I set myself out to do. Um, and, you know, through God, I've, I've been able to do that. Um, but, you know, Brother Pledge and Brother Ben just mentioned it. You know, the person you think in your mind is probably going to be the hardest one to win. Um, turns out to be the easiest one. And you never know who God is talking to sometimes. And, right. And um, who God's working on. And, um, and, that, and that was me. I, I, I had the privilege to, um, Serena, she been training me um, since I started. She's right there. Um, and it's been like um, about a month, month and a half since I've given you a job. Um, you know, and, and I was, when I got there, I started working on, um, um, a girl that was there, but then she left a couple weeks after. But again, it just, in my mind, I'm just like, you know, just getting, you know, starting to get to know her. I'm like, ah, it's going to be a little bit hard, but, um, but I was able to talk to her and, you know, she had questions and, you know, 
pastor always talks about, you know, be, being prepared um, to be able to answer those questions, and I was. Um, and um, I was able to answer those questions, and she kept asking more and more questions. And um, then she showed up to church one day, <laughs> and um, she came to church, and then I was able to talk to her the week after, um, you know, about God, about Christ, and, you know, um, try to ease her in some of the, th the questions she has, kind of, you know, the background she had a little bit. Um, and I was able to win her to the Lord with my wife. Um, and now she hasn't missed yet. She's still here, so I'm proud of her. Amen. Very good. Thank you very much. Is, is this not the way we do? Preacher, I can't just go up to a stranger and talk to them. And then about our families and people we know. You can't talk to them. They know everything. So basically, we don't want to witness to anybody. And the devil puts us in a corner saying, mind your own business. We're not here to mind our own business. We're here to mind his business. And when you do that, you have to get involved in people's eternal life. Where are you going to go? How, and most people, they come here with problems. They just do. And then it's amazing when I think of Socks and Soren here. You talk about problems when I first met them. They were a mess. And just stayed and listened and adjusted and stayed and listened and adjusted and kept giving themselves. And that great, great couple in our church. And by the way, not just them. There are many people all over this church the same way. So in case you just got here and think, boy, I bet all these are real good people and they probably grew up in church. No, most of them didn't. Most of them was as big a mess as you are, if not more. And now, here I am asking for their testimony to give to other people. There is a person that came here just when I needed him. And I didn't know what I was getting. You think I'm a genius for having all these people on staff. Man, these people can do about everything. All I needed, I had a slot to fill, and I said, would you mind doing this? Okay. Uh, the first person that came in the back was about seven years. Seven years ago. I called Brother Bob down in Texas, and I said, hey, I need an assistant pastor youth leader. What do you got in mind? He said, uh, I'll, I'll let you know. He said, actually, there was a young man here, I think it was two weeks earlier, that said he needs to go to a church because he knows God wants him to give his whole life to there. I said, who's this guy? So he told me. And uh, now, before he came here, he had to shave his goatee and mustache off. Can you imagine that? And uh, so he called, and I said, okay, I said, uh, tell me a little about yourself. Brother Bob filled in all the blanks, and I said, okay, here's what I need. I need you to come up here. What was it, like next week? And uh, Faith Harbor Week. And I said, I need you up here during that time. What do you need to do? He went to his boss, and the boss said, yeah, that's fine. You can go. So he came up here for one week. I think it was two or three months after. I never even called him. Never, never called him. Never dropped him a note. Nothing. And he's wondering, what's this guy going to do? I wasn't sure. We were going through an awful tough time at that time. I was too. And so I was just wondering what I should do. So finally I said, I want to hire you. He said, okay. Sold everything. Told his wife, pack it up. And here he was. He showed up here, and this place needed him at that time. I needed him. At that time, I know that sounds selfish, but I needed him at that time and uh, helped turn this whole place around. And then God began to add, of course, Brother Mike and his wife and Brother Celia and then Brother Cordry and all these young people started coming in again. I, I just I couldn't be any more pleased. Honestly, I couldn't. From your preacher, I want you to know today how pleased I am with you being here. And this is this is a great guy and actually like a son uh, in a lot of ways really is. And uh, wanting to give his testimony and or a soul winning experience, so go ahead, do that. Uh, first, I want to say, you know, I, I thank God for His grace, um, His love for us, and His mercy um, that endureth forever. The Bible talks about it and also says that it's grace is new every day, and boy, do we need His grace new every day. And uh, and so it just. My family coming up here seven years ago was exactly what God wanted us to do, and God has always proven that uh, in our lives, through our lives, just over and over, that this is where God wants us. The safest place you can ever be is in God's will. It doesn't matter where that is. The worst place you can ever be is outside of God's will. And uh, so God has always, always blessed and allowed us to be a part of this. And thank you, Pastor, for just the opportunity here. Um, God knew that I needed to be uh, under a pastor that uh, had uh, exact ways that he wanted something done, and that was a teaching moment for me that I needed to learn. 
and uh, and it has taught us a lot, our family a lot. God, and of course, we came up here and we only had one kid. Now we got four kids, and uh, just growing and and God has just continually blessed and allowed us to grow. Um, I was thinking about just uh, you know, Brother Silly mentioned it how we're, we have jobs outside of the church now, and uh, and God has allowed me now to start my own business and has absolutely blessed it. I mean, absolutely blessed it. And uh, I told God, like I did when I was in college, like I did when we got out of college and we came up here and we're on staff and worked here full time, is God, you, if you continue to bless me, I'm going to continue to give back to you. I'm going to continue to give back to you. And God has allowed us to do that. And uh, in that, like Brother Silly, I, you know, we, you're here every day. And it's really hard to be a good testimony for Christ and a witness when everybody you're around is someone you go to church with and, you know, it's the staff and, you know, this type of thing. And, you know, we talk about passing out tracks every day and it's like I'm here on property. I hope to see someone, you when know, on Peter, property Peter and, uh, <laughs> and uh, you'll give them a track, you know, type of thing. And, uh, but now we've had the opportunity to work out in the world and be a testimony for Christ where we're at. This last two weeks I was able to work at a house in Grove City and, and uh, family there is a Catholic family, and was able to multiple times, didn't ever got saved, but multiple times talk about church, talk about Christ, talk about what God's doing, talk about uh, this place, talk about our Christian school, just talk about Christ in just any way I could, trying to always bring church and God into a conversation, and uh, praying that hopefully they'll come and visit and buy them to church, and hoping they'll come and visit with us, um, but trying to do more than just a a weekend Christianity, and more than just a, when I have time, I'll, I'll, I'll invite someone to church. When I have time, I'll tell someone about Christ, but be that testimony that we're supposed to be. Um, got to go soul winning with Brother Ward yesterday, and uh, Brother Ward's fun to go soul winning with, because everything crazy finds him. Like, you don't have to look for it. If it's a woman that's high as a kite and has a taser in her hand trying to find someone to tase. I mean, it's just the weirdest things find him. And so when you go soul winning, it's like, all right, here we go. You know, be prepared for anything. And uh, went soul winning on South Wayne yesterday and knocked on the door, talked to a guy, got all the way to the end of salvation and, and got down to the prayer time. And he just, just flat out said, just, I'm not ready. Uh, I want to get to know God more before I accept him. And and I talked to him about the importance of salvation, and he just kind of denied it, and so invited him to church. Went down the street, like I said, people that you don't expect, right? And so knocking this door, and this woman opens the door, and she literally opens it and just kind of sticks her head. When someone just sticks their head out, and they don't really like open the door, it's like, okay, this isn't going to work. And uh, kind of just kind of short answers, yeah, okay, yep. And I said, well, let me ask you this before I go. Do you know for sure you're going to heaven? No. And she kind of opened the door a little bit. No. And I was like, okay. So would you like to know? Yeah. Said, okay. <laughs> and I'll take the Bible and show you. And was able to lead uh, Mayara to the Lord uh, yesterday. And she got saved. And uh, supposed to go by this next week and have someone visit with her. And hopefully she'll come to church. And so praise the Lord for that. Amen. What makes a church strong as a body is this kind of stuff. Uh, we're so busy sometimes we don't get a chance to be around each other a whole lot. And when we're not here, everybody kind of has to go and do what they need to do. Every once in a while, we just need to stop and appreciate the family. And I don't mean just in your home. I mean here, our church family. And some of us, we don't say a whole lot, but it's good for you to hear this. Because sometimes you don't even know the people that's around you sometimes. That's a pretty close church, and we all get along pretty good, except for Jerry. Jerry's always a problem in this church. And, um, but we're glad that they're here tonight. I, I've never done this before, but I'm going to. And uh, if you don't want to, just shake your head. Would you mind giving us a testimony, your testimony? Would you do that for us, please? Would you mind? Okay, give her that. Now, she's the one, Brother Celia, just said got saved at his workplace. And so... When I first got saved, they would go like this. I mean, you got, I got saved on a Saturday night. Sunday night, they told me I was preaching in church. I didn't know how to spell outline. I had no idea what Matthew was or anything. And they said, you're preaching. If you're called to preach, you should be able to preach. That's just the kind of church it was. And so I hit the ground running and stumbled and stumbled and stumbled. 
So I'm glad that you're here. Thank you so much, you and the boys, for being here. And uh, we're glad that, yeah, you took. So, Mommy, give us a testimony, would you please? I'm not good at public speaking, but I'll do my best. Get a little um, closer, a little closer. Thank you. So, Brother Celia had come into the office, and I just, my grandmother had recently passed away, so I just had a lot of more questions. Um, you know, like, how do I never get to see her again? And, like, I had come to church as a little girl, but then I kind of moved away from it. And then um, he was answering all my questions, and I was just like, let me go and just be a part of something. So that's why I came here, just to have a, a bigger family and to find God again. And so, you know, about my kids, so they can learn too. Yeah, that, that one's really shy. You need to work on him for public speaking a little more. Thank you very much. If I were not the pastor here, I would still come to Anchor Baptist Church. It's, I enjoy the people. I don't have to be in leadership to appreciate something like this. And you don't have to either. Now listen to me. There's somebody around you that maybe you're avoiding or thinking, I wonder if they really want to hear it. Just tell them. Just tell them. Be nice about it and tell them. If they don't want to hear it, let them tell you. Don't you assume that. Because you never know when somebody has lost somebody, and God said, now's that time. Now's that time. When somebody's going through a tough time, maybe financially, in a relationship somewhere, and the whole life is breaking down, you, you don't know that, but it's going on inside of them. And when you start talking about Christ, just like that, everything begins to change. Do not give up doing what God told us to do, because a lot of Christianity is giving it up. Do not do it. That's a big mistake. Whether I'm here or not, you need to do what's right to do. And this is what's right to do. Anchor Baptist Church has won tens and tens and tens of thousands of people to Christ. Amen. We're one of the few churches that still try to run buses, and we're having a tough time with that right now. There's a lot of things that when your kids get older, they need to be a part of, just like you did. So don't get busy in the world and forget what you have here. You heard the letters from the little kids? You heard testimonies from people. You heard your staff. You heard from a lot of people you don't normally get a chance to listen to. And we could go on and on and on. Probably should. But I want you to listen to me very carefully. Do not make this common to you where it doesn't mean anything. Talk to each other. Hey, tell me about the day you got saved. Oh, you don't want to hear that again. That's what my wife said. I said, tell me about the day because they challenged us in church. Tell us about the day you got saved. Honey, tell me about the day you got saved. Honey, you know I'm saved. You don't want to hear that. I thought, okay, something's not right. I didn't know what it was. I was always told she was saved. She always told me she was saved. But it started a spark on the inside that eventually, when things got bad enough and everything else, she said, God, am I really saved? That's all it took. Whole life changed because of that. Now, you listen to me. You never know how God's working a person's heart. So our job is just to walk with God, tell other people, keep moving forward no matter what you have to face. My brother Usher's here, and I normally let him witness. Brother Usher, he's been at it a long time, and I still remember the first time he came here, we went out soul winning. We got in my van, and we went down to the bottoms and started talking to people. I said, okay, here's what we're going to do, straight from New York, never been there before. He had no idea what the bottoms was from the tops to the west side or anything. And I said, okay, here's the way this is going to work. You just follow me, okay? And I am going. And I saw somebody. I said, okay, look, I'm going to go witness to that person right there. Uh, by the way, there's somebody down there if you want to go there. We never saw each other again all Saturday. I think it was like two and a half hours later we met back up because I was his ride to get back to church. And uh, we got back. We are talking about the people we talked to and the things we ran into, how exciting it was. And Marie, if you're watching, we're glad to have both of you here with us. Do you understand how precious this is? Do you understand what your children need to hear about these kinds of things? My mom and dad was on a bus route. My dad preached in junior church. Junior, what is that? That's little kids. Your dad did that? Yeah, my dad did that. Now you can teach them baseball, ice hockey. You can teach them anything you want to. But what they really, I'm not against that, but what they really ought to remember was, my dad loved the Lord. Amen. My dad got people in church. My dad 
went through hard times and stayed at it. My dad, my mom, that's what they need to hear. Amen. And that's what you're having here at the Anchor Baptist Church. Amen. So I'm glad to have you with us. I hope you take this with you. Thank you very much. Oh, I forgot about this. Where's Carrie Ann? Where's she at? Uh, one last testimony. Miss Carrie Ann, I need you to come up front. This is amazing, I think. This is Brother and Mrs. Chris. Raise your, raise your hand, please. That's their mom and dad. And they've been coming here since actually all of his kids were born here. David came here. He was got out of high school and was going to college here. And uh, decided to come to the Anchor Baptist Church. Best thing ever happened to him. And uh, had all of his kids since here. Now all of his girls, all three of his girls, getting ready to go off to college. And uh, so this is one of them. And she has a, a great uh, soul winning story. You need to hear about it. So it was uh, last Tuesday, and I was on my way to get Elena from her work, and her work was running behind, and they ended up leaving later, Um, and I'm so happy that I did, because I probably wouldn't have met this uh, one of my neighbors when we arrived at our house, and uh, well, I decided something in my heart just said, you go, go talk to her, and well, I talked to her. I asked her if she went to church anywhere. She was like, oh, I'm Catholic. Uh, I actually used to be a nun. And, well, I asked her, okay, well, more importantly than going to church, um, are you 100% sure you go to heaven? And she was, like, unsure. She didn't know um, that she would go. So I was like, well, there's some verses straight from the Bible on this track. I would love to show you how to get to heaven. So I went through salvation uh, with her, and she got saved. And um, then I ended up telling her about my grandma, who used to be a nun. And um, she, we had this really good conversation. And her name is Kathy. She's she was really sweet. So that's all. Thank you. And and that great story. And that great story. By the way, her grandpa, who's sitting there in that wheelchair right there, his wife was a nun for four years, right? And uh, they used to sit back here in the back, and I used to love to tell people I'd be preaching about Catholics and how. By the way, Catholics, are, many of them are nice people. It's just their doctrine's all messed up. And uh, I'd look at, and you could tell people look at me like, what are you talking about? I said, oh, you don't believe me? Right back here sits a woman that used to be a nun for four years. Am I telling the truth? And she'd go. And so it was what, but she can't come here now because of her health. But that's her granddaughter right there, and uh, now has one a nun to the Lord too. I thought that was a, she did what? She did. Well, how old are you, Carrie? Twenty-one years old, and uh, won a uh, older woman who's a nun, Catholic, and uh, one to the Lord. Isn't that an amazing story? That's so cool. I like that. But I'm glad that you're here tonight. I hope this gives you something to talk about other than other people. Or me, though that's worth talking about. Uh, also, you just found out there's a lot of comedians in our church, but uh, I'm glad that you're here. Thank you so much. Let's go ahead and stand. We'll be dismissed. And parents, thank you for investing in your children in these letters. Uh, very, very important. Thank you so much. Father in heaven.